Giorgio, after hearing the inputs from the South Africans, tell us what you think our chances are. <laughs> Don't expect too much from me, please. <laughs> but uh, thanks for your uh, for the invitation, and I'm really impressed by the discussion. Very interesting speakers. Um, I was invited initially uh, to give to participate at. Uh, at a uh, discussion that was held yesterday in Cosato on the, this idea of the creating, the promoting the Lula moment. And I see there are some people who were there yesterday also, so I have to watch out what I say today. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I will not comment on the South African reality because that I don't feel comfortable on that. I, I will point out some issues uh, on uh, that I think might be of help as an input to your discussion um, that reflects uh, our uh, experience. And um, <coughs> so, first of all, the discussion is to put poverty on the agenda. Uh, I think, of course, everybody likes to get rid of poverty, but there is a feeling that, I mean, you say it and nothing changed, it's part of nature and you have to accept, poor people themselves also feel that you know, that's their life and the only way to get out of it is to go to what's now very used for, uh, for the last years going on in Brazil, go to uh, more Protestant churches and then, you know, the, have their life in another place. So how to get out of this is by changing the nature of the debate. Eh? We had during the military dictatorship, we had a famous uh, we had, uh, economist who said a famous phrase, he said, uh, when the union started to demand um, salary increase, they said, listen, first the cake has to increase, and then we can think about how to divide it. And this is a famous phrase that Lula will always recall and say, we will do it differently. Uh, uh, it's, it's not poverty reduction cannot be, or inequality reduction cannot be a secondary outcome of a growth strategy. Uh, it must be, um, it must be part uh, it must be part and partial uh, from the beginning of any growth strategy. It must be at the center of it. Uh, uh, because the experience with this uh, theory of first the cake must increase, uh, that at the end we had the economy which was extremely concentrated uh, and uh, uh, record levels of uh, wealth and income uh, inequality. Uh, so. When the Workers' Party won the elections, when Lula won the election in October 2002, uh, the first, uh, you know, his famous speeches were in, in the beginning of January, he took over 1st of January 2003, and one of the first things, he went to the World Forum, uh, World Social Forum in Porto Alegre, and then immediately afterwards he went to the uh, Davos uh, Forum. Uh, so, and he made the same speech. Uh, he was the only leader that went to both forums and he did the same speech. And the same speech was about uh, poverty, uh, fighting poverty and, and uh, reduction of, of inequality as a starting point of any uh, uh, growth uh, strategy. A couple of months later, the Americans uh, bombed, started to bomb Ira Iraq. And then he started, uh, together with uh, Chile and France, an international campaign on fighting poverty. Uh, also showing that the way that Brazil would present itself was, was on this issue. Now, of course, the best way to fight poverty and income reduction is job creation. There can be no doubt about that. And making jobs which are then becoming more productive with upward mobility. But in between, uh, we must make sure, uh, and this is the insistence of Lula, uh, we make sure uh, that nobody lives in extreme poverty. Uh, because there is, of course, this famous saying that you shouldn't give fish to the poor, you should give them means that they can fish themselves. Uh, but uh, if you live in extreme poverty, uh, this becomes rather difficult. So there is no, uh, to, uh, I remember a meeting where Lula said to the Ministry of uh, Social Affairs, who is leading this huge program called Bos Familia, again, to uh, eradicate once and for all extreme poverty in, in Brazil. He said, stop uh, saying to the, to stop defend yourself in the press. Uh, because of the press, of course, is always saying, you know, this is not policies, you know, this is like charity. And, uh, and he said, stop defending. Just say, yes, it is charity. Yes, this is solidarity. 
Uh, this is what we want because to, to eradicate extreme poverty, uh, we cannot just uh, increase uh, our economic growth uh, figures. It must be a specific policies. Yeah. Um, now, we define by law in the moment extreme poverty as average household income with less than $35. Yeah? Um, well, you can, I know. So there are three things. I, I, I didn't come with a prepared uh, paper because I had no idea what I would find here. And I'm very impressed by also by the public because I see, I, I, not only very few of you, but I see uh, there's a mix of several people. So this is very interesting. But um, I put down some, some notes <coughs> listening to the f uh, previous speakers. And I think what for us, the <coughs> our experience is that to fight Poverty, I think that's, the, that's the, the objective of our talk. You need consensus, you need policies, and you need money. Yeah? <coughs> if you have consensus and policies and there's no earmarked money, then it won't work. <coughs> and of course, also money without policies is even worse. Um, so the consensus, <coughs> there, there, I think there are two things. There's one thing is fight against poverty, and the other thing is fight against inequality. Yeah? W yes, we, we, we uh, had a major success in the fight against poverty, but equally or even more important for Brazil is we had a major success in starting to fight inequality. Uh, because it's the inequality that's, that's, that makes uh, uh, the fight against inequality creates cohesion. Uh, so social inclusion cannot not just be a fight against uh, poverty. Uh, um, <coughs> now, what I can say, and I will come back to that, we, we won the ideological struggle to say that uh, poverty, extreme poverty is unacceptable. Yeah? But we didn't fight, the, we didn't won the, the battle to say that we have to go on with fighting inequality. So there's still a long go. But the first thing, what Lula, to create consensus, what Lula said from the beginning, I will do it with peace, and he means I will not take privilege out the hands of nobody. Yeah? I, will, I will not take privileges out, but I will make sure that every growth that we will have now will be going uh, to the poor. Uh, and that's what ended up. So if you see the results of 10-year Workers' Party government, the 20% most poor people, they have a, had an increase in their income of like 60, 70%. Uh, we call it Chinese increase. And, 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 but the 10% rich people, they also had an increase, but it has a small increase. Yeah. Now, I don't know if we can go on like this so peacefully, but, but, but it's the way that it was done to make sure uh, that, that the middle class, who was, of course, extremely suspicious, yeah, it was a, a huge outflow of capital, uh, it was a breakdown of our exchange rate in 2002. Uh, Lula knew very well that if he would go too fast, uh, the, the economy, econo economy will, would collapse in, in one year time. And so the importance to say, don't worry, uh, we won't, we won't uh, get, touch your, your privileges. Uh, so for example, what does it mean, upper middle class privilege? That they pay their private uh, uh, health insurance and then they deduce it from the income tax. So this is, of course, unacceptable, but it's still there. We will get rid of it. But there's a saying in Brazil, you kill one lion a day. Yeah? So th it's, it's on, the, on the list. But uh, so then we have don't have money for, for public health care. Yeah? So it's, it's, of course, these are all scandals. The fact that public, good public university, our university, the best public university, the, uh, but you can only go there until recently if you, if you had money to, to send your children to good uh, high schools, private high schools, very expensive private high schools, of more than $1,000 a month you spend for your children. And then you, have, you, then you are able to pass the exams for public schools, which are free, totally free. Of course, that's also a scandal. Uh, so this is still going on, but you have to go slowly. Uh, because there's a, as the first speaker very well expressed, it's about power relations. Uh, so you have to create power, create the conditions uh, that the poorer classes, the working classes, uh, can organize themselves. Uh, they have to change the power relations. Uh, and that's, uh, <coughs> well, so, for example, when, when the Bolsa Familia was launched, uh, because it's important to say that when I say we had success in the ideological uh, uh, struggle to make a cons create a consensus in society that extreme poverty is unacceptable and 
that we can get rid of it. That doesn't make any sense. A middle-income country like Brazil has to, has to live with extreme poverty. Yeah? Fifteen years ago, there was not such a consensus. Yeah? Middle-class people would say, what do I have to do with it? Yeah? Along the, the ruling classes. Yeah? They would put their money, buy apartments in Miami. They, uh, there are many ways just to not see the poverty also. Yeah? So when, uh, but today, uh, but today it's very clear that there is a whole s a consensus. Uh, the Bolsa Familia, which is a huge program, it attends now 12 million uh, uh, families, uh, and it makes sure that people get, uh, it's, it's both targeting and getting rid of this, uh, you know, to achieving the $35 uh, uh, per household, per, per average per household, and goes up to giving uh, uh, transfer money to people up to uh, average, house, uh, average income, for a household of seventy uh, seventy uh, dollars, uh, but the first reaction, the first reaction of the media, which is controlled by, by I mean, uh, we, we don't have a left wing <laughs> newspaper. It's incredible, but it's like this. So it's all the time. Uh, <coughs> the, the the first reaction was that both family. First, they said it doesn't work, but the state is not capable of doing that. It will be corruption, it will stay in the hand, uh, the half of the money will go to bureaucrats, and it doesn't work. It's impossible a country of, of the continental size of Brazil to set up a program like that. Yeah? And in fact, we had problems in the beginning. Yeah? But we made, how, why did it work? Because we had a state, 100% state bank, which is present in all the municipalities in Brazil, the Caixa, and it was decided that they would do it through the Caixa. In Bolivia, they did, it, did do, do it through the militaries. <laughs> but in, in Brazil, it was through the, through the uh, uh, Caixa. And uh, so going apart, not going through the bureaucracies of the municipalities. Uh, of course, that was also five municipalities. No, send it to us, then we will distribute. No, no, no. <laughs> and um, then when it worked, then the argument was it makes people lazy. This is charity, makes people lazy, people won't work anymore, and we will have more unproductivity. Which is, of course, incredible. I, I mean, people say, it's incredible. We're talking about up to $70 per person. Well, uh, well anyway. But then it worked out that it created jobs because it concentrates uh, together with, I mean, it's not, you can't analyze it by itself, uh, together with enormous increase in minimum wage linked to pension funds uh, means that you have in several areas, you have an enormous increase uh, through this, this combination of these programs, enormous increase in money available in the hands of poor people. And what do they do with money? They don't send it to Switzerland. Uh, they don't put it in, the, in derivatives. They immediately spend it. And they spend it on uh, uh, food, uh, which is made by smallholders, uh, they spend the beans and rice, everything. they spend on, f on, on clothing, etc. So it immediately created uh, a lot of opportunities for small business who then have access to credit, uh, and they have only access to credit if they formalize. So we have the enormous formalization of the economy. And once you're formalized, you have even more access to credit. So all this huge transfer of the availability of money was turbinized by an enormous increase of credit. There was no credit in the Brazilian economy because of the income inequality. Either you had the money and you didn't need the credit, you just buy your, your, your Rolls Royce or whatever, eh? or you hadn't the, the, the money and you hadn't had access to credit. Had the poor people hadn't had access to credit. So there was no housing credit, for example, for the poor. You just set up your shanty town and, and that's it. Eh? So we went from less than 20% GDP credit, and now we have 52% which is still by international standard absolutely under control. There's nothing like a credit bubble going on. But for Brazil, it's of course enormous. You, you, you concentrate the availability of money uh, and you have this multiplier effect uh, working as, as Keynes was dreaming of. Well, but um, now, it's not just about transfer of, of money. It's about a lot of policies. Uh, po poverty has a lot of aspects. Of course, we know that. Of course, everybody read Amartya Sen and things. So every min its not just the Ministry of Social Affairs. It's every ministry uh, where consensus is created 
on how to do it and how this consensus is created. From the beginning, I, I, I'm in this document of Cosato, I said it yesterday, there's, it's a very good document uh, on the Luna movement, but there's one phrase, and, and I made it clear, that said it, uh, Lula had a top-down model. I, I don't know whether that was a, that was a mistake. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, it, it was um, the, the whole the policies, especially the on fight against poverty, was organized through a series of uh, uh, national conferences set up through municipal conferences, which were then elect delegates and sent to state conferences, uh, and uh, on ev on every single policy. For example, uh, rural uh, uh, development. So we would have uh, municipal uh, uh, conferences where, where all the stakeholders would be invited uh, and they would send uh, delegates by stakeholders groups to, to, to the state level and then to the national level. So you would have, you know, millions of people have been participated in, in this process. And for example, in the case of the smallholders, uh, the, X, the X also there, it's the credit. Uh, we had the credit line which was less than, than, than 1 billion reais, and it's, 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 it was increased by 10. Uh, it was an enormous uh, program. But also in this conference, people said, why don't we make a law, make a law that public schools must give meals to children? And these meals, then, the schools are obliged, the municipalities are obliged to buy it from the smallholders' corporations. So you create economic power uh, linked to this, you know, you have the guarantee of an enormous market, of course, millions of children. And so you first, you know, that if, the especially in poorer areas, uh, for people, uh, the, the main meal of their children became this. This was a policy that came out of these conferences. Uh, um, <coughs> Then we have the uh, Lula. This is a ministry that was set up by, by, by Lula. Another ministry that was set up by Lula was the ministry to, for public policies for race equality, which was, of course, was the myth, uh, but it was still very strong. Uh, there's no race problem in Brazil. Uh, and, and it's uh, one of the first law, the first law that Lula signed uh, in 2003 was to make mandatory in all schools in Brazil, the teaching of Afro-Brazilian history. To find out that we had no books about it and that the teachers didn't know about it. I remember me talking to the teacher of my children, saying, I'm sorry, I know the law exists, but I, we don't know how to organize. There's no teacher who can do that. Yeah. So this ministry, but then of course, the, the black population in Brazil is concentrated in the, in the, in the poorer, uh, because of the history, of course, and everything, and of the existing discrimination. Uh, the, 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 the all research shows all the time uh, the income uh, in the, for the same job uh, is lower. Uh, um, so specific policies also there were developed as an outcome. So it's, it's not just, then you have the, uh, the uh, Ministry for Women, the Ministry of Cities, uh, very important, of course, the Shanty Town upgrading. It was a huge uh, 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 program. It's also through this, this, um, this uh, consultations. Uh, well, Ministry of Education, of course. Um, what there, the, the, it's, I mean, there was millions of, of new uh, uh, possibilities were created for people to go to, 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 to the universities. And one you know, for poor people, they would have free access to private universities. Because Lula said, okay, so these private universities, they are just there to make money. And 25% of all Congress members, in one way or the other, they are owners of private universities. So how can I get rid of these private universities? Uh, as he said, I'm going with peace. Uh, what's the problem? They don't pay any tax. They were all in debt. The, 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 you know, they don't pay any tax. And Lula said, okay, I won't close you down. Uh, I will do two things. I will put exams to, sh to show if you really give good education. Uh, and if it, you have three years consecutive that you don't pass, that the children, uh, that the students don't pass the exam, we close you down. So there's enormous threat. But it's not only about closing down, just the, the numbers that are published at uh, that university. Uh, uh, because it's universities for people who come from public schools. Uh, they're, they're not so expensive, uh, these, these private universities, but they're very bad quality. They're just there to, to, 
to make money. Eh? So then Lula said, okay, so first there is a way that I force you to increase your, your quality. Yeah, I will publish uh, the notes. Uh, so then of course, if you don't go to university, which has uh, one uh, note from one center. And then he said, okay, you have these debts. Uh, I can't, uh, in the fight against tax evasion, I can't just close my eyes, but I also know that you will never be able to, to, to pay it. So let's exchange it for free access for poor students. Yeah? So we created more than one million. Of course, the extreme less left still will say that, that this is horrible policies, etc. But it's about power relations, shifting, you know, one line a day. Yeah? So we created this, so poor, there's one million people, and there's a lot, of, most of them are black students. They are going uh, and uh, uh, they have this free free access, okay? And they have to get also some money for transport, etc. So these are all policies that have to do with poverty reduction. You see, I can uh, min Ministry of Energy lower energy rates, etc., etc. Um, and of course, the, the Treasury and the central bank must al also be convinced that's part and partial of their this uh, strategy. Um, now. What, um, do I have some more time? Yeah, five minutes? Okay. Okay, well, then I will be go a little bit quicker. Uh, so the, the, the creation of this internal market, I already told this, uh, the both family rates, costs, total costs are very low, by the way. It's very important. It's 1.2% of GDP. Uh, so this this huge program, 1.2% of GDP, and 96% of all the money goes straight to the poor people. And so it was set up really in, in, in a way that the overhead is very low. It's one of the, that was one something that, that struck the World Bank when they started to analyze it, that made the World Bank put a stamp, this is a good program. Um, okay. Uh, then Lula always makes jokes. Eh? We, all the time we fight it against the World Bank, and now we ask them to approve our, our policies, <laughs> well, to make them more uh, salon fave, whatever. Um, another, you need money. You need money, yeah? You need money earmarked for these things. Now, where do you get the money from? So, fight against tax evasion. Lula did not increase any tax, yeah? But our tax basis was enormously increased, the tax collection. How? First, fight against tax evasion, yeah? But also, and secondly, formalization. Yeah? The formalization, and how do you convince people to formalize? Well, for if you, First, if you create a lot of jobs, then the workers themselves, and there is pressure on the labor market. Uh, we have now, uh, we went from 15% from uh, unemployment rate to have now, we have now 5% unemployment rate. We created 20 million jobs, of which 70% in the formal sector. And that's the issue. All the liberal economists, what were they saying? Only if you get rid of your labor laws, only if you diminish the labor rights, then you can create formal jobs. Otherwise, you only create informal jobs. Uh, and that is something that Lula also said. That's a myth. Uh, I will show you that I can convince a medium or small company that in, is interesting to formalize, because if he formalize, I give him credit, credits with cheap interest rates. And as interest rates are very high, uh, these are traits of which become interesting. And if you, if you, if you create more jobs and the, the workers themselves, they won't accept any more jobs that are not even, even uh, domestic workers, uh, more and more, they're saying, listen, if you don't me give me a formal contract, ciao, ciao. And what did Lula do he, to, to, to make it easier for uh, middle class, upper middle class families to, to formalize this labor relation with domestic workers, which is by itself the biggest labor force in Brazil, has 7.2 million, mainly black women. Um, he said, if you formalize uh, the contract with your domestic worker, then you can deduce, uh, because what's the main, what's the, what's the extra cost? It's social security. Yeah. So the social security, so as, as a family, you have to pay the social security for your domestic worker. And then the domestic work, of course, gets all the rights, but that's then with the state. But the, the paying the social security, uh, you can deduce that from your income tax. A scandal, would the extreme left say. And in some way it is, but it was a form, because for the state, it means there's no money going in or out. Because what you, what you lose in your income tax, you gain in your social security. Yeah? So you, but what you gain really the society is an enormous, you know, a cultural change. Eh? 
to say that these are workers. They need be, to, to have the same kind of, of, of labor relations. Eh? So this is uh, the, the, the cultural aspects of And then, okay, we had specific taxes on financial transactions. Uh, financial transactions earmarked also for policy to fight against. Uh, now, this, uh, the thing about financial transactions became a little bit complicated because, l let me just, the financial transaction, was every financial transaction in Brazil was taxed. Every. To get it approved in the first instance by Congress, look how perverse, the Congress says we approve it, but it must be clear that, that the tax authorities are not allowed to use the information. A couple of years later, Lula said, listen, we are not using it, but we are seeing that the amount of money we collect is totally uh, out of proportion of what we say that what is being taxed. Yeah. So there's a lot of illegal money going there up and down. Yeah. So yes, we will, when Lula then the force to do it, we will in Congress, it was changed, and tax co uh, the tax authorities would use this information. Now to give you an idea, this transaction tax raised like, mm, let's say, $10 billion. But at the end, in the last year it was working, the what it revealed of illegal flows which were then taxed, eh, with the m was almost the same amount. This is incredible. Eh? So no wonder that this was the major political defeat of Lula. Eh, it, it was in Congress then defeated him. Eh, uh, with uh, the, 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 they needed a new uh, law to to get it to to have it uh, for m more years because to approve it had to be provisory. And Lula said, I want to continue with it. And, and then Congress said, no, you don't, because the argument was you don't need it. You have already increased in your tax collection, etc." And then Lula, Lula said, OK, and if I put it at 0 0.000001, will you approve it then? No. And he said it very clearly on television. Congress didn't approve it because the majority of these people are, are, are linked with tax evasion and, and things like that. So this is an issue. Um, uh, you need this uh, sort of increase of, you need money and earmarked money for it. Uh, also in the growth strategy, our growth strategy, which we started in 2006, which was extremely important, you know, to put you know, growth strategy with figures, with, 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 uh, uh, which also the press is following, you know, there are clear targets, etc. But it's, there were three pillars, energy, transport, and, which is normal thing, and social investments. Uh, social investments is, is key issues. Uh, okay, so now the, to end, sorry, uh, we won the battle, the battle uh, to make, to say Brazil is capable to fight extreme poverty and there is a consensus uh, that these programs will continue, there is no candidate who will step forward presently and say I will get rid of this program, uh, they will say I will continue this program, they have to say I will continue this program, but we are not we did not win the battle to say that we have to continue to diminish income inequality because we did it, but it's still very high. And the upper middle class, Lula did not take any privilege out of them, but they are not comfortable to see poor people in the same room suddenly taking an airplane because they can, because if there's the credit, you can spell it, out, you can spread it out in ten months, and suddenly they can go back to their to their poor regions of origin by plane. And people don't feel comfortable to see in their universities suddenly black people around. Yeah, and so uh, just to give you one ex so there is a cultural bat battle uh, still going on. To, to give you one example, at when Lula stepped down as president, he discovered he had cancer, and the day that he discovered he had cancer. I still got emotional of it because I was so shocked. My daughter came home and she said she's going to a private high school. She said they're celebrating it. After eight years that they did not take anything out of them, they, only, they, only, yeah, they also had an uh, increase of income. But there's still this, this, this idea uh, about the upper middle class that you know, doing something for the poor is taking out our privileges because it's diminishing the apartheid, that we, social apartheid that we have in, in Brazil. That's it. Thank you very much.